from BearingArms.com. Cops called after teacher spies BB gun in kids' bedroom during virtual class. Yeah. Now, this sounds almost reasonable, right? That, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's, there's a reason to be afraid here. But, no. Police in Baltimore County, Maryland, yeah, surprise, surprise, paid a visit to Courtney Lancaster's home the other day after getting a call from the school resource officer at Seneca Elementary, where Lancaster's 11-year-old son is in fifth grade. He's been attending school online since March without incident, but apparently an eagle-eyed teacher saw something in the child's bedroom that required a police response, a BB gun. Now, here's the fucked up part about this. When you call the police on someone unnecessarily, you're subjecting them to the whims of violent criminals who shoot dogs when they show up to homes. It's also completely unjustified when you would think if a child had a, an actual gun, a rifle in their bedroom, that you would call the fucking parents first. They're right there. And they're not going to pick up that rifle and start shooting dogs with it. Or kids, which has happened in police raids, no-knock raids on wrong addresses before. And of course, there's the famous case of Breonna Taylor. So, no, this is just absolutely, I mean, I'm not just showing like this is, oh, here's the news. This is, this is like, oh, yeah, you got to know, here's the story. But no, this is a really important takeaway. Now, more than ever, is it critical to keep your children away from government, and especially government schools? Now, this has got to have some effect on the police. And one of the fun stories that we saw this past week from the hill.com and their changing America coverage. The headline is, I'm leaving. You guys won. Seattle police officer quits because of protests. And this is awesome. Um, CJ, can you can you pull up the video on this one? I, I, I wanna I wanna go go through this because this is a uh, resigning police officer resigning caught on camera. It's not a long exchange. Roll tape. Not really. You're around. No, well, I'm sorry for that, but don't worry, man, because guess what? I'm leaving. You guys won. Fucking two months, baby. I'm out. You're about to resign? I'm fucking gone, bro. What's it, what's it, what's, what, how, how you feeling about that? You're, you're about I'm, to resign? I'm feeling great. You're about to resign or what? Yeah, I'm fucking feeling great. Is that what you're saying? I, guess, yeah. I am leaving this department. You guys won. Could I get an interview yeah. from you by that about that? You cannot. So you, what, you're just tired of uh, of police uh, brutality or are you tired of what's going on right now? Oh, us. Why? Hey, hey, this guy, this guy said that he's resigning. Don't do that, He said he's resigning. Hey, he, he said he's tired of us. He's going to resign because of Black Lives Matter, not because he's tired of the police. Hey, fuck you and fuck Spog. Hey, you triggered, boy? You triggered? Oink, oink. Oink, oink. Yeah. Fuck you and your blue light, boy. Fuck you and your blue light. No, we ain't never going to be friends. We'll never see eye to eye. We'll never see eye to eye. I don't give a fuck if you take that badge off. You'll never be my people. You'll never be my friend. Now, I have a lot of conflicting feelings about this exchange, obviously, right? Uh, cop decides to quit working for government, enforcing laws for politicians. That's fucking awesome. Tits. But if it's because he just is tired of the protesters as opposed to supportive of them, you go, is he doing this for the right reasons? Is he quitting because the police don't, is, uh, the, 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 the government is asking him to 
you know, patrol protests and, and being nicer than he wants. I, I mean, that could be. And it's sort of like, you know, hey, I'm I'm a psychopath asshole who likes to beat up protesters and the government won't let me do that as a cop now. You guys won. I'm tired of this shit. I'm out of here. Well, I'm still really glad that he's quitting, right? But it seems like he was at least starting with an olive branch. And I'm really disappointed in the pro- I'm disappointed in both people involved. I mean, I'm happy with I'm happy with the outcome and I'm happy with the process. People protested, pissed off the criminals in blue, and some of them quit their jobs. Great. But why attack the guy doing what you want, even if he's doing it for the wrong reasons, when you can kind of, I mean, he turned on him as soon as he said, I'm not going to do an interview with you. Come on. You know, he's going to face more shit from that, even if he's leaving in two months, if he's not allowed to do that. Well, he's got maybe maybe two months is when he gets his pension or some other benefit he qualifies for or something like that. And it's like, you know what? I, I get it when when someone is being an aggressor, an actual criminal. And, and I, I, I put you know, like 99 percent of cops in this category I mean, in a sense. Yeah, there are no such thing as good cops because they all protect the bad ones. Uh, maybe there are a couple exceptions in some super rural communities where there are people who are able to serve their community and, and, and you know, they're, they're still taking stolen money for their salaries. So maybe they're not, you know, in that sense, yeah, they're criminals. But if you're talking, they're not, they're not the aggressor in that case, right? But if you're talking about cops who are protecting bad cops and enforcing victimless crime laws, they're criminals in uniform. Not just the ones who are extorting people and directly stealing and getting paid with stolen funds and all that. But yeah, if you're enforcing victims crime laws as a cop, you're a criminal. And we should confront those people and do whatever it takes to defend the people, to defend their victims against their aggressions, right? Whether they're going after drug users or drivers or people, you know, business owners or you know, just taxpayers, whatever it is. You know, we should stop them. We should you know, do, use whatever force is necessary, right? If a cop is, is going to uh, shoot your dog, uh, that's a family member. You shoot that cop. Yeah. Uh, if a family member is an actual, you know, human family member is about to be shot by the cop. Yeah. You shoot that cop. I mean, it's better if you can tase him or use pepper spray or subdue him and, and, and not kill him, obviously. But whatever force is necessary to stop that justified. So I am wholeheartedly supportive of Black Lives Matter directly making the criminal behavior of cops more difficult for them and encouraging them to quit. But that does not mean that it is ever justified or helpful in a situation like this where you're just creating personal strife and conflict for someone who's already said, I'm out of here. He's not engaged in an act of aggression in the moment. So why not reach out with love and compassion and encourage people to do the right thing? As I think we're seeing a little bit more of in San Francisco, our next headline from zerohedge.com, San Francisco's cops aren't waiting around to be defunded. They're leaving en masse. Police in San Francisco aren't waiting around for pandering politicians to defund the city's police department, which has already seen a mass exodus of officers following the passage of a state law called Prop 47, a statewide criminal justice law passed back in 2014, it appears the pace of officer exits is picking up this year. And what's even more interesting, the acceleration started before the murder of George Floyd. According to San Francisco Chronicle, 23 officers resigned during the first six months of the year, with many resigning even before Floyd's murder. Most expect that another wave of resignation spurred by the protests and widespread anti-police sentiment in the deep blue state will spur even more officers to leave. Now, there's a, there's a bit of a misrepresentation here because we know... And certainly I would hope that the majority of those officers quitting are not doing so because of the anti-police sentiment, but they're doing so because of the reasoning behind that anti-police sentiment. Let's like walk through this for a second. I'm a cop and you get in my face and say, fuck you for being a cop. You're enforcing victimless crime laws. You're doing these evil things and you should stop doing those evil things. If I go home and go, Yeah, those are evil things. I should stop doing those evil things. You can look at that story and say, well, it was because of that guy, because that guy got in his face. But is that the real reason? No, the real reason is because you realize you're being an asshole and you want to stop being an asshole. Now, there's a little way to burst this bubble in the story because that's not actually the majority. 
of those 19 took jobs at other law enforcement agencies and in and outside the state by comparison 26 officers resigned in 2019 and only 12 officers resigned in 18. so they're getting out of san francisco at least they're being chased away from a city where there is more sensitive but in 2020 the number of officers leaving could double the number from 2019 and nearly quadruple the pace of 2018. So this is, you know, there's a lot, there's there's a really positive shakeup happening in police in America because of Black Lives Matter. And whether you support them or not, if you support freedom, you got to appreciate that. Now, our next story comes from Reason.com. And yes, I'm going to connect this again. Police and schools. Are you doing it for the children? Are you serving your community? The headline from Reason.com is, when teachers call the cops on parents whose kids skip their Zoom classes. Remember I told you about the eagle-eyed teacher who spotted the BB gun and called the cops? It's not an isolated incident. Punishing families for struggling with distance learning is doubly wrong. If there's one thing the public school system should be doing right now, it's making life even more hellishly difficult for parents. And yet many teachers in the state of Massachusetts are contacting authorities to report parents for suspected child abuse when kids fail to show up for Zoom classes. Yeah, your internet goes down. Next thing you know, CPS is at your door. Remember, Child Protective Services, whatever fucking alphabet soup agency they call it in your state in order to hide the fact that it's federal money coming down to support child trafficking all across america by stealing kids out of their homes for spurious reasons in order to send them into a foster system where corrupt homes abuse them come on you got to keep your kids away from government it is you and anyway because the, the thing is when they send these people to your home Oh, we see that you have a bong in your in, in your living room. It's out of your child's reach where they would never see it. But, oh, you smoke pot? That's against federal law. Even if it's legal in your state, now we have to steal your kids. And the stories that you hear about this where they actually have incidents at taking the kids, it's cops. Who's doing the stealing of the kids? Who steals children for government? Police. Yeah. So according to the Boston Globe, quote, Massachusetts school officials have reported dozens of families to state social workers for possible neglect charges because of issues related to their children's participation in remote learning classes during the pandemic shutdown. The infuriating article is worth reading in full. The Globe spoke with several parents who have received calls and visits from the State Department of Children and Families, DCF. The department has the power to remove children from their homes and place them in foster care if agents suspect that kids are being mistreated, abused, or neglected, and DCF considers distance learning no shows to be possible abuse cases. DCF lists numerous circumstances in which teachers should feel obliged to call the cops, among them kids appearing tired or hungry during Zoom sessions. That's right. You can have your kid just appear tired or hungry. And the teacher could report them to DCF in Massachusetts. Now, you'd think teachers would be quitting en masse when they were being asked to be agents of child trafficking, let alone propaganda conditioning. But yeah, think about this for a second, teachers, now doing distance learning with your students. When you're asked to report them to DCF or whatever your state agency is called, you are assisting in human trafficking and ripping families apart. Kidnapping. It's fucking sick. Now, the cops are the ones who actually enforce this. You think they like that part about their jobs? You ever talk to a cop who's done those calls? Showed up to a home when it was time to move a child away from their parents to a foster home? I don't know, man. I did some bad shit in the Marines. It wasn't worth it. There's no paycheck you could give me that would make it worth being haunted by having done evil for the rest of my life. Working parents who have no choice but to leave their young children in the care of a sibling or let them fend for themselves will be particularly vulnerable to unfounded child services investigations. This isn't a theoretical concern. Consider the case of M. Kilis, who struggled to work her full-time job while overseeing her young son's schooling during 
remote class time, her seven-year-old was largely supervised by his teenage brother who had his own schoolwork to do. Yeah. They don't steal children from rich families, from, well, politically connected families. So the last two paragraphs of this, this great story from Reason. Massachusetts DCF is not radically different from the child services departments in the other 49 states and similar issues are probably cropping up elsewhere. The harm is likely to be worse for poorer families, though economic security is by no means a guarantee of safety from predatory child services investigations. The decision to rely partly or entirely on virtual learning has created a horrible situation for many working parents who depend on school for daycare. Public school officials should be treating such families with empathy and patience, not putting the authorities on speed dial. And that's really putting it mildly. So let's go back to the cops for a second. Remember, without you, politicians couldn't do anything. I really want you to listen to this. Any police officers who might be watching right now, everything that is wrong with America because of government would not be possible without your help. You are the strong arm of government. You are the barrel of the gun from which the political power of the American government flows. Without an enforcement class, governments can't do unethical things. The enforcement class, cops, soldiers, other government law enforcement agents, you are the ones willing to do violence against peaceful people on behalf of politicians. The sooner you all quit your jobs, the better off humanity will be.